Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today in this part 12 of DP203 exam Q&A series, we are going to cover 15 very important questions. Today we will focus on questions based on Azure SQL Server, Azure Data Warehouse which is now better known as Azure Synapse and here we will understand a very important data warehouse concept called slowly moving dimension. And this will help you better design data warehouse in Microsoft Azure. And then we will take some questions on Azure Data Factory and much more is coming up. So let's learn something new today and get one step closer to DP203 certificate. And friends for a complete course coverage, it's imperative that you watch all the previous parts as we have already covered 145 questions on DP203. Each question is important, so please do not miss any of the previous parts. Many important concepts are explained and on top of it, you will also get access to Microsoft documentation and a free PDF file containing all the questions with answers discussed in last 11 parts, which will help you further in your self learning. Links to all the previous videos are available in the description box. And as always, I will share a free PDF file containing all the 15 questions with answers discussed in this video. And for that, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 148, 153 and 158. And friends, do appreciate us by liking and sharing this video if this video is time worthy for you and you gain some knowledge. Also, please do not forget to subscribe the channel, press that bell icon to receive all the notifications of our upcoming videos. So let's begin part 12 with understanding slowly changing dimension. We will take three back to back questions on this concept. So here comes question number 146. The question says that your company is building a data warehouse where they want to keep track of changes in customer mailing address. You want to keep current mailing address and the previous one. Which SCD type should you use? Your options are type 1 SCD, type 2, type 3, type 6 SCD. Before answering this question, let's first understand these different type of slowly changing dimensions. And for that, I am here on the Microsoft documentation that will help us choose between slowly changing dimensions. And to start with, Microsoft says that the most common types are type 1 and type 2. And in practice, the dimension table may support a combination of history tracking methods, including type 3 and type 6. So let's first read very briefly on each type of SCD. Coming to the type 1, the Microsoft says a type 1 SCD always reflects the latest value. When changes in source data are detected, the dimension table is overwritten. And in this example, Microsoft is actually trying to show that at any given point of time, each record will just have one row. In case there are updates on the record, that will be overwritten on the same record. Now let's move on with type 2 SCD. A type 2 SCD supports versioning of dimension members. Often the source system does not store versions, so the data warehouse load process detects and manages the changes in a dimension table. Here the most important thing is that we maintain version of the record by using columns like start date, end date or maybe we can also use a flag column which can be like is current. And here also you can see an example given by Microsoft. In the first table you can see we have two records. The first record is for the person called Yoon Kao and the second one is for Suzanne Eaton. You can also observe there is a start date and end date. However, for now you can observe the end date is mentioned as 31st of December 9999, which of course is very far in future. And in case there is some update coming on some of the record, then a new row is inserted. In addition to this new row insertion, there is an end date mentioned in the previous record and the new record now holds the far date in future. Now let's move on with the type 3 SCD. The type 3 SCD supports storing two versions of dimension member as separate columns. The table include a column for the current value of a member plus either the original or previous value of the member. Here you can see the example also given by Microsoft and in this example you must understand that type 3 SCD uses additional columns to track one key instance of history rather than storing additional rows to track each change like we did in type 2 SCD. Moving on to type 6 SCD, here Microsoft says that a type 6 SCD combines type 1, 2 and 3. When a change happens to type 2 member, you can create a new row 
with appropriate start date and end date. And once again, Microsoft has given a very suitable example. You can also read that in type six design, you also store the current value in all previous versions of that entity so that you can easily report on current value or the historical value. Coming back to the PPT and based on the knowledge that we just gained from Microsoft documentation, the correct answer for this question is option C type three SCD. Moving on with the question number 147, the question says that your company is building a data warehouse where they want to keep only the latest vendor company name from which your company purchases raw materials. Which type of SCD should you use? Your options once again are type one, type two, type three or type six. And the correct answer for this question is type one SCD. Now let's move on with question number 148 and the question says that your company is building a data warehouse where they want to keep track of changes in customer mailing address. You want to keep the current mailing address and the previous one and please note that both new and old mailing address should be stored as different rows. Which SCD type should you use? Your options are type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 6. And this time, my friends, the correct answer is option B, type 2 SCD. And I strongly recommend that you must visit that Microsoft documentation that I just showed you. The link is available in the description box. In addition to that Microsoft documentation, I have also created this cheat sheet, which you can refer while preparing for DP203. And now let's move on to the next question 149. The question says that you are building an Azure Analytics query that will receive input data from Azure IoT Hub and write the results to Azure Blob Storage. You need to calculate the difference in readings per sensor per hour. How should you complete the query? And here you can see that we are given with a select query and you have to complete this query by selecting the correct options from these two drop downs. And friends, this is the Microsoft documentation where we will find our correct answer. And on this documentation, you have to scroll a little bit and then you will reach to a section which is called examples. And the very first query in this section holds our answer. So you can see that we are given with the query and as per the question, we have to fill in the values for this section and this section. So I hope you have noted the values. The value for the first option would be lag and the value for the second option should be limit duration. And as we gain from the Microsoft documentation, the correct answer for the first option is lag and the second option is limit duration. Now let's move on with question number 150. The question says that you have an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool. You need to ensure that the data in the pool is encrypted at rest. The solution must not require modifying applications that query the data. What should you do? Your options are enable encryption at rest for the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen2 account or should you enable transparent data encryption for the pool? The third option is use the customer managed key to enable double encryption for the Azure Synapse workspace. And the fourth option is create an Azure Key Vault in Azure subscription and grant access to the pool. And the correct answer for this question is option B, enable transparent data encryption for the pool. Now let me give you a quick detail on transparent data encryption, which helps protect against the threat of malicious activity by encrypting and decrypting your data at rest. When you encrypt your database, associated backups and transaction log files, they are encrypted without requiring any changes to your application. The TDE encrypts the storage of an entire database by using symmetric key called the database encryption key. Now let's take one more question on transparent data encryption and here comes question number 151. The question says that you have an Azure subscription that contains a logical Microsoft SQL Server named Server 1. The Server 1 hosts Azure Synapse Analytics SQL dedicated pool that is named as Pool 1 and you need to recommend a transparent data encryption solution for the Server 1. The solution must meet the following requirement. The first one is track the usage of encryption keys. The second one is maintain the access of client apps to Pool 1 in the event of Azure Data Center outage that affects the availability of encryption keys. What should you include in the recommendation? And here you have to answer on two levels, two boxes here and each box respectively represents the requirements given in the question. So let's head on to the first part of the question. It says that to track encryption key usage, your options are always encrypted. 
TDE with customer managed key or the last option is TDE with platform managed keys and the correct answer to this part of the question is TDE with customer managed keys. Moving on to the second part of the questions that says to maintain client app access in the event of a data center outage. Your options are create and configure Azure keywords in two Azure regions. The second option is enable advanced data security on server one. The third option is implement the client apps by using Microsoft.NET Framework data provider. And the correct answer for this part of the question is option A, create and configure Azure key vaults into Azure regions. Let's move on with question number 152. The question says that you plan to create an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool. You need to minimize the time it takes to identify queries that return confidential information as defined by the company's data privacy regulations and the users who executed the queues. Which two components should you include in the solution? Your options are sensitivity classification labels applied to the columns that contains confidential information. The second option is resource stacks for the database that contains confidential information. The third option is audit logs sent to the log analytics workspace. And the last option given is dynamic data masking for the columns that contains confidential information. And the correct answer for this question is option A and option D. Now let's take few questions on Azure Data Factory. Here comes question number 153. And that says that while using Azure Data Factory, you want to parameterize a linked service and pass dynamic values at one time which supported connector should you use and your options are azure data lake storage gen 2 the second option is azure data factory variables the third one is azure synapse analytics and the fourth one is azure key vault and the correct answer to this question is option c azure synapse analytics now let's move on with question number 154 the question says that which file formats azure data factory supports your options are avro format binary delimited text format, excel format, json format, orc, paraquet, xml or does it support all of the above given formats? And the correct answer for this question is option i, all of the above. And friends, if you are interested to read more about the file formats supported by Microsoft Azure Data Factory, then this is the Microsoft documentation. Here you are given with all of the formats and if you click any of the format, you will be taken to a documentation which will give you all the details on that particular format. Moving on with question number 155, the question says that which property indicates parallelism you want the copy activity to use. Your options are parallel copy, stage copies or multi copies. The correct answer for this question is option A, parallel copies. Now let's move on to one more very interesting question on Azure Data Factory. Question number 156 says that using Azure Data Factory user interface, you want to create a pipeline that copies and transforms the data from an Azure Data Lake storage Gen2 source to an Azure Data Lake storage Gen2 sync using mapping data flow. Choose the correct steps in right order. And your options are create the Data Factory account, create a Data Factory, create a copy activity, create a pipeline with data flow activity, validate the copy activity, build a mapping data flow with four transformations, test run the pipeline and the last one is monitor a data flow activity. The correct answer for this question is option B, option D, option F, G and H. And of course, please note the correct order of all these activities. Now let's move on with question number 157. The question says that in Azure Data Factory, which is an example of branching activity used in control flows? Your options are the if condition, until condition or lookup condition. The correct answer for this question is option A, the if condition. Now let's move on with question number 158. The question says that which activity can retrieve a data set from any data sources supported by Data Factory and Synapse pipelines. Your options are find activity, lookup activity or validate activity. The correct answer for this question is option B, lookup activity. Moving on with question number 159, the question says that you build a data warehouse in an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool. Analysts write a complex select query that contains multiple join and 
key statements to transform the data for use in inventory reports. The inventory reports will use the data and additional where parameters depending upon the report. The reports will be produced once daily and you need to implement a solution that makes the data set available for the reports. The solution must minimize the query times. What should you implement? And your options are an ordered clustered column store index, a materialized view. The third option is result set caching and the fourth option is a replicated table. The correct answer to this question is option B, a materialized view. Now let's move on to question number 160, which is the last question for part 12 of DP203 exam Q&A series. Reading out the question, it says, which Azure service should you use to provide customer facing reports, dashboards and analytics in your application? Your options are Azure reports, Azure Power BI or Azure Monitor. The correct answer for this question is option B Azure Power BI. Friends, I hope you enjoyed today's video having 15 questions on some of the very important concepts on DP203. And as always, we welcome your suggestions and feedback. You can also share your questions, doubts and inputs on what you want to see on the Tech Blackboard channel. You can send us your inputs in the YouTube comment section on Facebook. You can also use Instagram Messenger or simply tweet us. And now you can also email us on connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com. Thank you so much for learning with us. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning, and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.